From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. I don't know, we've been talking so much about world headlines and what's happening in the world, and I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it, all the rebellion and revolts and everything else going on around the world. My first headline, Iran urges worldwide Islamic revolt. Worldwide. Also, Christians oppose the United Nations blasphemy and hate speech law. We're going to talk about why. And free speech on trial in Europe, in Holland, right now. But before we get into this, you know, a lot of people are talking about some of the things that Jack refers to, especially the coming of the Lord, and that is our comfort, our blessed hope. We know the Lord is coming again. He promised to come back. And uh, talking about a young man who wanted the Lord to come back, but not quite so soon, not quite so soon. Right, Jack? Right. He was in high school, and he said, I want the Lord to come. I'm a Christian, but I would like to experience the joy of graduating from high school first. And he did. And then he said, Lord, if you delay your coming just a little longer, I'll go through college, and what a thrill it'll be the night I wear my cap and gown then. Can you wait for a while? He graduated. Then he said, Lord, one more plea. I want to get married. I want to see what it's like. And the minister said, I now pronounce you husband and wife. And everything was glorious. But four months later, they had their first spat. And he looked heavenward and he said, Revelation 2220, I stand on it. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you oh, something, girl. folks. There are some of you Christians who are Laodicean, backslidden. You don't want the Lord to come. You love pleasure more than you love God. You're enamored with the world, with its goods, its materialism. Don't come back and ruin it all, Lord Jesus. But I'm going to tell you this. It won't be long after you hear today's program that you're going to be begging for the Lord to come. You will be saying, oh, no one knows the day and the hour. It could be another hundred years. Come on. You're going to be saying, Jesus, please come quickly, because when the going gets tough, you're going to be falling on your face before God and saying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jack, I'm so happy for that. That Jesus said, if I go away, I will come again. What a comfort that brings to my heart. Yeah. And not because we argue. <laughs> not at all. No, but not, because... Amen. Boy, I'm just one of the lucky guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know... Why are you so miserable about Christ's return? Don't you love him? Oh, yes. Well, Revelation 22, 4, as soon as we're called up hither in Revelation 4, 1, it says, they shall see his face. Amen. Something wrong. If that doesn't bless your heart. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because you want to see his face and be with him. The bride with the groom, Revelation 19.7, to come back to earth for the honeymoon for a thousand years in Revelation 20, verse 4. Oh, Jack, what a wonderful, blessed hope, looking for the coming of our Savior. Well, you know, the eyes of the world have been focused on all the riots and revolutions and rebellion over in the Middle East. And take a look on Time Magazine, the generation changing the world. A lot of that uh, rebellion over there is among and started among the young people. From 30 Again. years of age and down, the majority in all the nations. Again, Time Magazine, Rage, Rap, and Revolution. Once again, you see Class of 2011. Now, the demise of the dictators. You see who's throwing the rocks and everything else. And the instability index with Ben Aligon and Mubarak tottering. We know he's gone now. Who's next for the most vulnerable? See the right 
upper right. Now they are naming 11 countries, very vulnerable, of course, starting with Egypt and going on to Tunisia and so forth. And let me just say, friends, that there has to be a cause for all the rebellion and, and everything else going on with the riots and tossing out the leaders, you know, starting with Ben Ali of Tunisia. Jack, what is this all about? Do you know that in the year 2004, Ahmadinejad and this Khomeini, who is his religious cleric, his Ayman, said, we want to take over the entire world. It doesn't matter if millions of our people die through atomic warfare. If our flag can fly over all the nations, we're for it. And at that time, they said, we will try to disrupt all of our Islamic nations for an Islamic awakening, a revolution that will stir them up so we can get the new world order of the Muslims into motion. Wow, Jack, that is something. Well, I have to ask Jack where all those 11 countries, are they really found in the Bible? I was amazed, though, because Jack and I have been in Egypt uh, several times, and Mubarak, of course, is, was the leader there for 29 years, and now he is ousted along with Ben Ali. Uh, Jack, uh, where are these Bible verses saying these countries? Is it really in the Bible? Oh, it really is. Daniel 11:40, the king of the south is Egypt. Syria is Isaiah 17, 1. Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7. We have Persia, Ethiopia, uh, Libya, and those nations. Of course, Persia is not the one that's going to see the dictator topple as of yet because he is the one that's stirring up the entire message you're going to see today. He wants this to happen. He wants to be the leader of the Muslim New World Order. You also see Turkey there in verse 7 of Ezekiel 38. And then there's the term Kush and put in the original Hebrew. And that takes in Yemen, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Sudan, and all of those nations. And then, of course, there is Lebanon and Jordan. And you find that in Psalm 83, verses 4 and 7. It's all happening right now because one little Hitler says, I want to cause the awakening of Islam for the greatest revolt in history to become the leaders of the entire globe. Whoa, Jack, that is something. Well, you know, friends, the Islamic revolution is not new. It isn't new. How long has it been the desire of the Islamic leaders to see this happening, bold enough to see it happening? Now, I'm going to go back to a headline of 2005. Iran urges worldwide Islamic revolt. It's nothing new. Iranian speaker terms revolutions in Tunisia, Egypt, Islamic awakening. Islamic awakening. That's what I've been saying. All right. Iran's supreme leader, Egypt unrest inspired by our Islamic revolution. All right. That's a statement from February. Iran's leadership cracks down. And uh, even though they're revolting there, they regret it in Tehran. Funerals bring new clashes. They're killing their own people. Iran parliamentarians call for death of opposition leaders. He won't stand for anything. Uh, right. And again, Clinton expresses U.S. support for Iran protesters. Now, of course, that is our Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. And then, of course, Russia has to, has to enter in, warns West against encouraging Middle East protest. And again, Ahmadinejad, there he is, calls for Mideast without Israel and U.S. He's saying, we don't want any interference from Israel and the United States. I'd like to see them out of the picture. Well, what is Ahmadinejad's goal? What does he really want? Jack, how about that? What is his goal? World domination. And his religious leader says, our flag flying over all the countries of the world. And you know, last week I mentioned this, but Ahmadinejad and Chavez 
of Venezuela are close friends, and Chavez said when he was just in Iran, I'm going to stand with him during the revolution for Islam to take over the world. That's the goal. And of course, Ahmadinejad, uh, hand in hand, is in a relationship with Al Qaeda, with the Taliban. He sponsors Hezbollah in Lebanon, sponsors Hamas in Palestine. There's just no end to what he wants to do. But what really shocked me in those headlines, well, I shouldn't say shocked me because I don't believe in this stark treaty that our president has made with Russia because the New York Times reported that he went to Russia and said, will you help me control Iran? He said, I will not build our bases in Czechoslovakia or Poland if you'll help me control it. And they said, oh, wonderful, wonderful. And at the same time, they've built a base in Kaliningrad. And get this, Shavaz was approached by Russia to build a major base right there in his country so they could easily send their missiles here to the United States of America. Plus, right now, Venezuela is a training camp for all of these terrorists for the future. And guess what? Iran already has had them trained up to 40,000 suicide bombers for the near future. You're going to be praying for Jesus to come and soon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, did you notice something? It really bothers my heart. The Iranian parliamentarians call for death of opposition leaders. How can they kill their own people? Because they have a revolt, because they want something changed? They kill their own people? How about that, Jack? How can they do that? I don't understand it. Because, Rexella, they look upon anyone who defects from the faith in even a minute way as an apostate. And you have different groups within them. And the peace lovers are the Sufis. I know some of them. And there are good people in all the groups. I have acquaintances among the Bangladesh and Jordanians, but especially the Sufis. But let's go the other way. At the top of those who hate are the Wahhabites. That's bin Laden's crowd. And they say, we will kill everyone who does not adhere to the faith. And they want even the Shiites to kill the Sunnis. And the Sunnis, the Shiites, because they're not true to the faith. They're apostates. The Wahhabites are the only ones. And there's just no hope. 85,000 have been murdered in Iraq as Sunnis and Shiites kill one another and blow up one another's mosques in honor to Allah. Unbelievable. Now, let's see what the Bible has to say about love and hate. Christianity is so different. Do you know that the son of Hamas, the leader of the Palestinians right now, has found Jesus as his Savior and he said he couldn't stand all the hatred anymore in my father's religion. And one day I picked up a New Testament and read about the love of Jesus and I've been changed. And what did he find about love in this precious book? First of all, Jesus, Matthew 19, 19. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, my followers, because you have love one for another. And oh, this is unbelievable. First John 3, 16. Not the gospel, but later in the book. Hereby perceive we the love of God because God, that's the Lord Jesus, laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren, for one another. Wow! But then he lays some other facts down. The Spirit of Christ in 1 John, chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. He that saith he is in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness. He that loves his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. For as John 3, 10, And this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, children of God, children of the devil. Whosoever doth not practice righteousness is not of God, 
neither he that loves not his brother. Let's continue. 1 John 3, 14, we know not hope so, guess so, think so, but we know we have passed from death unto life, salvation, because we love the brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen to verse 15. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. In Islam, if you have a jacket on full of bombs and run into a group of your own brothers and sisters of the faith, you get 72 virgins for all eternity. God says no murderer has eternal life. There will be no heaven and no virgins. If in Christianity, we don't work that way. 1 John 4, verses 7, 8, Beloved, let us love one another, for the love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. I said it three times, one for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so you really get it. 1 John 4, 20, If a man say, I love God, and he hates his brother, he's a liar. And you know what Jesus said about these groups in his day, religious people, the way they operated? Listen to him. He was bold. Matthew 23, 15. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one convert, and when he's made you, make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. What did you say in verse 33, Jesus? You serpents, you bunch of snakes, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? Let's get this kind of experience. Christianity. Mm. You know, Jack, I love it. I love where the Islamic leader's son was converted because yeah. of love. love. You know, that's the thing about Christians. Jesus said, love your enemies. Other religions say, my enemy, if you don't agree with me, you die. How wonderful to know. Rick Sella, in yes. this uprising now, in Egypt, in Libya, they're killing them. They said they've already murdered over a thousand in Libya, and it could happen even in Iran. And he is protesting. If they ever try it in Iran, you're going to see bloodshed like you've never seen. Love. Oh, yes. We need to practice that. If you're a Christian, make sure that you have the evidence that you have love for the Lord and other people. Oh my, I am so happy to announce something. We have a brand new offer. Whoa, attack on Christian America, the United Nations threat on your beliefs. Take a look at the preview. Doctors Jack and Rex Alabanapi have just released the most astonishing video ever. Questions troubling millions in North America are answered. For instance, why do 50% in America question President Obama's Christianity? What is his position on the Bible, Christ, heaven and hell? Why does he and his administration forbid the use of terms such as Islamic terrorist after acts have been perpetrated within our nation? Why does he show his favoritism to Islam over Christianity, such as the cancellation of Billy Graham's son as chairman and speaker at America's Day of Prayer, because Franklin Graham spoke out against the massacre and cremation of 3,000 innocent victims on 9-11? Why is our president silent concerning the persecution and slaughter of Christians in most Muslim nations? Why is he promoting the passage of the United Nations hate law bill that favors Islam? Why is he quiet about the teaching of Islam concerning their prophet Jesus? His background in Islamic schools should have made him know that their Jesus is not the Christ of Christianity. Get the facts, learn the truth, order now. All right, a brand new offer, and we really want you. There's the 800 number and the address. My, oh, my, the United Nations threat to your beliefs. Can you believe it? Attack on Christian America. Is it really happening, Jack? Our president just went to a prayer meeting and said, I am a Christian. Is he really? Find out the fact. I've got the documentation. Oh, be one of the first to get this. There's the 800 number, and there is the address. So make the call or write to us. We'll get it in the mail right away. It's so important that you know where our president is going on some of these issues. All right, friends. The United Nations, oh, my, oh, my, is debating putting into law a volatile resolution how the United Nations encourages 
Religious murder. Can't believe that one. Christians oppose United Nations defamation resolution. And here is Hillary Clinton, who is saying the time has come for the international community not only to reject the United Nations resolution protecting blasphemy laws, but to directly condemn blasphemy laws as violations of freedom of religion and speech. The Coptic in Egypt fear Islamic law. Now, those are the Christians in Egypt. They're fearing that. Again, assassin of Pakistani governor driven by belief in the blasphemy law. Now, he was outspoken in Pakistan about the blasphemy law, so they went in and they killed him. His bodyguard. His bodyguard killed him, yes. Thousands rallied to uphold Pakistani blasphemy law. And in Holland, free speech is on trial right now. An elected member of the Dutch Parliament faces prison for anti-Muslim thought crime. We're going to probably see a lot more of that. Now, you recognize this gentleman? He's the Ayman, Fasal Abdal Roth. He's the one who wanted to put up a mosque near Ground Zero. Well, he is not in control now. The Ayman Abdallah Abhami it was in control, and I'm going to tell you what happened to him. Ground Zero Ayman, apostates against Islam must be jailed now. This Ayman also went farther. He said not only jailed, but killed. So he also is not in control there. I am going to quote someone that we all really respect, Charles Krothheimer. This is what he has to say. There's a reason why the administration's cowardice about identifying those trying to kill us cannot be allowed. It is demoralizing. It trivialized the war between jihad barbarianism and Western decency and diminished the memory of those who have died fighting it. And here we go. Pakistan cleric offers reward for killing Christian woman. Now, they were offered $6,000 to anyone who would kill her. God help oh, us. Oh, my, oh, my. Take a look at this picture of this young girl on Time magazine. What happens if we leave Afghanistan? She was being persecuted in this family, and she tried to run away. So what did they do? They caught her, cut off her nose and her ears. Oh, my, oh, my, but she was brought back to the United States. Her nose has been replaced. Her ears have been replaced. She looks really quite beautiful again. I just can't understand this kind of treatment. And I want to ask Jack, what is the blasphemy law, and why is the United Nations pushing it? Try to push it through, Jack. Why? Because 47 of the nations that attend are Islamic, and they've got many friends. And so right now, since 1999, they've been pushing it. Our president's for it. Hillary's against it. And if it passes, God help America. God help the world. Because if you say a word against Muhammad or the Quran, you can be put in prison or even put to death. Now, they call that breaking the blasphemy law, the hate speech law. Will you hear me? I want everybody in America to hear this. And I've got it recorded on that tape. Listen, Jesus comes back. Mahdi is the one, Messiah of the Shiites, who comes, and Ahmadinejad says, before he'll come, I have to kill most of the Jews first. That's love. And then he said, Jesus returns with him. Now, don't miss one word. And when Jesus comes, he said, I'm a fake. I did not die on the cross. And we'd love to tell you all the things they tell us as to why he didn't die on the cross. You cannot call him the son of God because Allah is not a father of a child. But we are talking about our God, Yahweh, and he did have a son. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16. Furthermore, Jesus said, while I've been gone, I've become converted to Islam. I am now following Allah, and I want all of you to listen to me as an evangelist for Allah, you must turn to the truth. And then he goes on to say, and I'm sent to break all of the crosses because none of what I did was real. You talk about hate speech? I'm mad. 
Be angry and sin not, the Bible says. What you say about my Jesus is far worse than what any man has ever said about Muhammad. Mm, Jack, that is not the Jesus of the Bible. You better believe it's not. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Jesus died for our sins. How wonderful to know that when we look to the Lord Jesus, we can be converted, we can leave our sins aside, we can be washed clean and know that we're ready for heaven. That's who Jesus is, the powerful Son of God, the Savior of the world. You want him to be your Savior? He'll come into your heart if you only open your heart. This is why we're in your home right now. Have you ever asked Jesus to be your Savior? Oh, Jack, will you pray the prayer of salvation? Oh, friend, we need the truth, and Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. He's everything he said he was, and he loves you, wants to save you. Right now, Jesus, I believe in you. I love you because you first loved me. Jesus, I want salvation. I want you in my heart to take away all my sin. Jesus, I receive you today as my own personal Savior. Come in now. Save me. Amen. Whoa, come in now and save me. Jesus can do that. He's the Savior of the world. He'll cleanse you. You can start over, and I will send you absolutely free this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. There's my address. Please write to me. I'd love to hear from you. And, whoa, here's our new wonderful offer of the week, Attack on Christian America. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can get it right away. Chuck? To order your copy of Attack on Christian America on DVD or VHS, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Appee Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Appee Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Well, friends, so much of what we said today is on here and much, much more. Make the call. There's the 800 number. You need to have the answers to attack on Christian America. Make the call. Oh, my, I was talking to someone just uh, this week about faith in God and Jesus Christ. And I emphasize this to her, the saying I'd like to leave with you. God can take the place of anything, but nothing can take the place of God. Oh, trust in the Lord Jesus and in God. We're going to be looking forward to being your home again next week, the Lord willing. Until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very, very much. Bye. -bye.